Inclusive design is essentially design that works well for everybody. Whatever it is you're designing or creating, how usable is that for people, for human beings? The demographics of the world are changing and more and more people need more inclusivity designed into everything that we do in our day-to-day -day lives. People don't always use buildings the way the architects, the designers expect them to. Um, so it's about that understanding of people. If you can create an environment that people want to be in, then they're going to flourish and so are you. I'm the Senior Inclusive Design Manager here at London Legacy Development Corporation. There was very careful consideration to design the park and the venues for both the Olympic Games and the Paralympic Games in tandem, um, which meant creating the most accessible public realm space and park venues for all the sport that you could possibly create. The Olympic Park is in one of the most diverse areas of London, so in order to understand what the legacy requirements were, we needed to go out to community groups at the very start and ask them what would you like to see in a park that will be your park in the future. It does definitely offer a lot in terms of accessibility with, with the buggy. The playground was designed to cater for children and some adults, as it happens, with a range of uh, abilities and also for a range of, of ages. You can spend the whole day here, have picnics, walks, play in the sand. It's got a whole variety of things to do. This is nonsensical to create a space or an environment that uh, excludes a certain percentage of the population. You want everyone to be able to use it. You want it to be welcoming. You want it to be an enjoyable place to be that people will come back to, people will tell their friends about. I'm Brant Salt. I'm retired. I was an electronics fitter. I'm totally blind, I'm a guide dog user. The Disability Design Reference Group was uh, in some ways a unique concept where it brought people with lived experience into the boardroom, if you like, and gave them the chance to influence planning at a very early stage. The selection criteria for DDIG members is that they are public transport users, um, they are based in Greater Manchester and also they've got a real enthusiasm for inclusive design and making spaces accessible. Inclusive design for me should be fundamental for any urban designers and practitioners. The earlier you get people involved then the easier it is to build those sort of bits in, into the stops, into the, into the trams themselves. The later you leave it the more difficult it becomes because it then becomes retrofit rather than in the built environment. You see it's quite nicely designed. When we go out with uh, the DDIG members and look at the finished product and the feedback you get. We are spending vast sums of money and it's good to know that we're actually spending it in the right ways, that we're not excluding anybody. Greater Manchester wanted to make Metrolink as inclusive as possible. We've managed to do that through uh, working with the DDRG. We're averaging now about 34 million journeys per annum and it's right across the board, all age groups, so it's a really, really broad cross-section of people that we have used the trams. We want to be the most accessible and inclusive bank in the FTSE 100. When we launched um, one of our um, pioneering machines within the branches that automates transactions, we delayed the um, buying something off the shelf and actually invested in creating something that was customised to our needs. But we included um, you know, people of all ages, people of different disabilities as part of that design process. And what we ended up with was something that actually now holds a walking stick or a cane, which we never have, would have thought of if we were just thinking about the, the legal requirement. There are practical reasons to do it for everyone that will benefit um, everybody in different, in different ways. We believe and we've experienced the fact that this isn't just morally the right thing to do but it's absolutely and fundamentally good for business. It's putting the person, the human at the heart of what you do because no matter what industry or sector you're in, it's, there's a human in there somewhere so just anticipate and consider their needs. The City of London is, is very unique in, in lots of ways. Myself in my role, I'm a fairly pragmatic and as much as I want to improve access for everyone, I'm very sympathetic to the fabric of a building. St Mary Le Beau Church, which is located on Cheapside, it's a Wren church designed by Sir Christopher Wren. It survived the Great Fire of London in 1666 and indeed the Blitz in the, the 1940s. To try to get things like handrails put in place on such an iconic listed building is not without its issues. And when I talk about trying to bring about accessibility, I have to be aware of any constructional constraints, any financial constraints, and whether it has listed status, of course. It's a question of trying to negotiate the best solution which works for everyone. 
I'm very proud to say that the City of London Access Group, which we have here in the city, is still going very strong. We have a core membership of about 35 members, and they generally have a disability, but not all. They act as consultees to ourselves, but more importantly to other city officers. The bar drops down, enabling step-free access into the church and through the doors. We forever strive for inclusive design and equality for everyone. And that embraces everyone, whether you have a disability or not. I always maintain if we improve things for disabled people, we'll improve things for everyone. I'm Deborah Aidan, I'm the Executive Director of The Everyman and The Playhouse here in Liverpool. In 2011, we'd finally managed to secure the funding to demolish the old building and start construction on the building that we're now sitting in, the Sterling Prize winning Everyman Theatre. Steve Tompkins, the architect, came to Liverpool and held various consultation sessions with members of the audience, with community members and with artists to take them through the plans and really get people's input but also let them feel that they were safe on this journey with us. We always try to programme um, work that will appeal to a wide range of people, work that creates joy, whoever you are, wherever you're from, whatever your background. And we have a very extensive programme of community engagement. We have a lot of projects operating in different communities around Merseyside, which are in the more disadvantaged areas of the city or which have barriers to attending theatre, might not have historically felt that theatre was for them. So we work very hard at getting the message out there and building relationships and finding out what people are interested in um, and working on partnership community projects. We've worked with Homotopia. They are a, a brilliant sort of resource in the city in terms of arts for the LGBT community. A lot of people, ordinary people, one way or another, were involved in the design. The reclaimed bricks from the previous building and from other areas in the, in the city, that was something people wanted. If an environment is open to everyone, then everyone is a potential customer in business terms. Young Everyman Playhouse, or YEP, it is an evolution, effectively, of what we think the 21st century youth theatre could be. With what the new building now is, they have that dedicated space for them. This room has been designed with me in mind and the rest of you. It kind of feels like our own theatre, especially this space, F1. It is our, our own space. We can use it for whatever we want to, really. It doesn't feel like an absolutely brand new building. It feels like home. It, it feels like going back to your mum and dad's. I feel already comfortable in this building when I come in. It's very welcoming. There's always like someone you know around who you can just say hi to. I'm most proud that we and the design team managed to bring the spirit of the theatre forward and allow it to flourish in a way that the old building was, was constraining it. If we're going to change the attitudes towards inclusivity, then we need to be dealing with it at the education levels before people come into the industry. They need to understand that it's a fundamental part of everything we do. It doesn't matter what we build, what we construct, what we design.